Hello and welcoming, welcome to our continuing adventures on the Cyber Defenders platform. Today we are taking a whack at the easy retired lab of Amadi. Scenario is an after hours alert from the endpoint detection and response. EDR system flag suspicious activity on a Windows workstation. The flag malware aligns with the Atomy Trojan Stealer. Your job is to analyze the presented memory dump and create a detailed report for actions taken by the malware. And we're given seven questions. Go ahead and get a machine started, and we will take a look at there. Well, that's going. Uh, we'll go through the questions. In the memory dump analysis, determining the root of the malicious activity is essential for comprehending the extent of the intrusion. What is the name of the parent process that triggered this malicious behavior? Once the rogue process is identified, its exact location on the device can be revealed more or can reveal more about its nature and source. Where is this process housed on the workstation? Persistent external communications suggest the malware's attempt to reach out to a C2C server. Can you identify the command and control or C2C server IP that the process interacts with? Following the malware link with the C2C, the malware is likely fetching additional tools or modules. How many distinct files is it trying to bring onto the compromised workstation? Identifying the storage points of these additional components is critical for containment and cleanup. What is the full path of the file downloaded that is used by the malware? Uh, used by the malware in its activity. Once retrieved, the malware aims to act Activate its additional components, which child process is initialized by the malware to execute these files. Understanding the full range of Atomy's persistent mechanism mechanisms can help in the effective mitigation. Apart from the locations already spotlighted, where else might the malware be ensuring its consistent persistence? Okay. So what do we have here? I mean, realistically, I'd rather just get a uh, memory dump and download that and run it through since this all looks like this is going to be volatility, which is fine. Okay, so it looks like we got a Windows workstation, or not a Windows, yeah. <laughs> Tools, artifacts, readme. What do we have? Uh, artifacts folder contains to be analyzed, Windows 7. And we just use what we have. Okay, that's fine. So then I am just going to go here. I'm just going to copy this. And we're going to go up a level. We're going to go to tools. Because I am just going to operate all of this from this one directory. And while that's going, we're going to go ahead and open this up. You're going to give me an LS. And we're going to go to the desktop. And make sure... CD start here, that goes in here, and then we're going to CD to tools, and we're just going to make sure we're in volatility, and we share this, or LS this out, and we see the snapshot. And I am just going to go through, and we are going to rename this snapshot 4.vmem, we're just going to change this to win7 just to make it shorter. We made a copy of it, so it shouldn't be too terrible. Okay, so our first aspect is now that we need to get some info off this sucker. Uh, what do we need? Python 3 full.py dash f Let's just bring this all the way out. We'll specify win seven dot vmem. And then windows.info. Let's just make sure that this is working. It appears that it is. We've got symbols look like it's mapped. 
see windows let's see isn't there supposed to be like a timestamp on this too somewhere within here yeah 2023 okay that's great it's 64-bit we get confirmation okay so let's get started then uh, we're gonna start with a PS list so we can take a look at everything that's there and see IP config now immediately jumping out at me um, process right here LSAS uh, one too many S's because it's what L S A S S dot exe not L S S so that looks a little bit weird we get a command so if we do what is it cmd line process exited oh there's that's an interesting section too right here run dll32 sherlock app data roaming oh yeah lsas even if it was that is not a typical location for LSAS. So our whole aspect is what they want to know. So I'm going to say it's going to be L A or L S S A S S dot E X C. Apparently we're on the money. Okay. Uh, once the rogue process is identified, its exact location, which we figured out from here by running the CMD line, so we're going to copy that. And we'll see if we can paste this in without a problem. Apparently we can. And we got that too. Okay. <laughs> I love these volatility ones. Uh, persistent. So we are looking for then uh, network traffic. So that's what, net scan? Try to remember the, uh, everything that runs through all this. All right, so this is popping out. So then we're going to look for uh, L S S A S S right here. So it looks like it is communicating out to forty one seventy five eighty four twelve over port eighty. So I don't remember if, did they want the port? No, they do not specify the port. Okay, uh, let's see, see. How many distinct files is it trying to bring onto the workstation? And then, so it's looking for other things that we might be looking for. Uh, okay. I mean, if I had to guess just from this particular aspect. So let's go back. Uh, this looks odd. This clip64.dll. The LSAS looks odd. And does anything else basically stand out from that particular point? Or does that look like that's mostly... I think that's mostly what we're looking at. Okay, I'm going to say two off of that. The clip and then the LSAS. Let's see if we're right. Okay, we are. I don't see anything else that's running off of the capture that we have. Uh, then they want the full thing. So I'm going to still maintain the fact uh, that that clip DLL, clip 64, is our problem child. So they want the path, so let's see users, 0x, Sherlock, in lead speak, app data roaming, 116711, Echo, 5, Alpha, 2, Alpha, Bravo, 0, 5, and then clip64.dll. Okay, so we, we are entirely on the money then. Uh, activate what child process is... Oh, um, run dll32.exe because that's what's called here. And it's also the fact that this is running underneath that. So, 
Okay, um, and then we're down to, we're looking for persistence. So, uh, the file scan. And then grep for our extra LSAS. What can you tell us? So we get it in the Xerox Sherlock. Hello. Okay, so we get it in the C users zero X Sherlock app data local temp nine two five echo seven echo nine nine Charlie five and then LSAS. There's also so C Windows System thirty two tasks LSAS.exe. So there should be a scheduled task that was created and they just wanted the file location. So okay. I'm assuming it's just gonna be this then. Starting with C colon and submit. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> and this is off the sock level one track. I figured I'd just try to go through and do the uh, retired ones that are there. Um, but yeah, so there we go. A Maddie Lab. And still have like 48 minutes. <laughs> okay, let's terminate that. So that way we're not wasting their uh, cycles on that. So there we go. That's been seven questions in sub 15 minutes. This is uh, a nice quick one and done. <laughs> oh, it's been kind of a volatility kick. So they have an official walkthrough. So can I click this without losing points or anything? I just want to see, okay, did I miss anything here? So they talk about the Steeler, specialize in recon, data collection, credential harvesting, and persistent connections, volatility three. They talk about the same thing about doing PS list in order to take a look at the stuff that's there. And so they saw legit LSAS and then the other LSAS. So yeah, and then the other aspect to take away from that. So you got your parent process or your process ID, parent process ID down here. And we can see that effectively the parent process ID for run DLL 32 is 2748. And obviously the process ID for LSAS with the extra S, the extra SAS, uh, is 2748. So if you've never gone through and done a process listing in uh, a volatility memory dump, then, okay, this is what you're effectively looking for. And I probably could have put the points together, but when something stands out as that obvious, it's kind of hard not to uh, jump on it. But do so at your own peril. So, okay, we've got those tied together, and that takes care of the other one. And then they did the same particular aspect with running CMD line, except they specified it just to PID uh, 2748, which in their particular instance just gave the actual lo full-on location. Well, I guess that would have made it a little bit easier as opposed to just looking through everything. Uh, then they did net scan, same thing that I did. Oh, and, and they specifically looked for gripping for the process ID of 2748. And that again would have given them a much more restricted view of what was going on. So a different way to approach it. I sometimes just like to take a look at all the info just to see if anything else stands out. Um, but at least this one, this would have been a lot cleaner. Ah, uh, they get the same aspect, 41.75.84.12. Uh, then they do mem map. And they do a dump. And what's this aspect to? Oh, how many distinct items? 
Okay, so they actually went a little bit further than then. They pulled that down. Okay, so I, I got lucky. They actually go through, they dump the process ID of 2748, so the LSAS, and then they run a strings across the dump looking for Git. And then, because obviously Git would be to pull down the files in question from where this is trying to reach out. And then you would have been observant that, okay, in the two requests for Git, uh, slash rock slash plugins and then a cred 64.dll and a clip 64.dll and so obviously what we observed so far in the tree is the actual clip 64.dll we did not see the cred 64 so my way was effectively just blind stinking luck that it was two Uh, then they're doing a file scan, and they're looking for either CRED64 or CLIP64. This is... okay, where was it downloaded? And granted, yes, the only thing that we end up getting out of all of that from the file scan is what we observed, the CLIP64, so maybe the CRED64 did not actually come down. Activated what child process? That was when we took a look at the process ID and parent process ID at the start of this whole walkthrough aspect of the comparison. And then they go through and they did the same exact thing. They again did file scan looking for LSAS, trying to find it, and then they happened to catch it that again inside of C Windows System 32 tasks, there was a copy of the file there. So let's see, files stored in the task directory are typically associated with Windows Task Scheduler, a legitimate tool used to automate tasks. Malware often abuses scheduled tasks to establish persistence by creating tasks that execute malicious files at predetermined intervals or system events. The other aspect would be um, inside the registry, the the run, run once locations for either the machine or the user profile. Uh, or the startup folder, um, either for the user profile itself or for all of them that would be underneath program data, if memory serves me right. But yeah, so all that through, we lucked out for question four, but hey, <laughs> it is what it is. So there we go. That has been the Cyber Defenders Easy Lab of Amadi. Retired. So with all that being said, I will see everybody in the next video.